Hey, hello and welcome to this really fun tutorial by Marvel. Uh, flow motion. So just follow me into After Effects. Okay, I thought it's about time for another object tracking tutorial. And as the new Deadpool and Wolverine movie just hit the big screen, I thought that would be a perfect match. And hey, we will even model the 3D claws within After Effects today. No joke. So, first of all, what is an object track? Hmm. Basically, exactly what it says. It tracks an object, its position and rotation in 3D space. And this technique is essential when you want to add something in 3D to an object that itself is moving. And as always, let's start from simple to advanced. So, we start with this sphere here. Let's say we want to add something to it in 3D space. Well, there's no other option than the Geo Tracker from Keen Tools because After Effects is not yet capable of doing that. And if you have watched other object track tutorials from me already, you know that I always give away free licenses for this tool. As this indeed costs a little bit of money, but it's worth every penny. And I'll tell you how you can get one at the end of this video. But first things first, I filmed this with a 24mm lens, so we set up a 24mm camera in After Effects. Because depending on that, the Geo Tracker will calculate what it is doing. So think about setting up a whole scene where you want to shoot a movie later on. And after setting everything up, you bring in the camera for the first time, look through the lens and realize that most of the stuff needs to go somewhere else, different places, or just does not look good through that specific lens. Always set up the camera first. This is important. Now, as we want to track this sphere, let's go to the primitives and choose it. Super easy to align it. Simply click on the mesh, hold and drag into position. And try to do that with the least amount of points. Well, a trick here. If you need a few more points for the first alignment, that's fine. You can delete some of those by right clicking on them before you start tracking. Now we need to open up the toolbar, which is the tracking window, and click on Track Forward. And if you see any issues, simply pause at that point and realign as good as you can. So, once done, meaning once you have made your way through the whole clip, simply click on Refine All, and in that way it will recalculate the whole clip with your manual adjustments. Now you can either create a null that represents the sphere, or you can create a null and click on the position in 3D space where it should be. And you guessed it, now you can attach 3D objects to that. Simply by pick whipping them. And if you hold down Alt while doing so, it will also already bring it in the right position for you. Great. So the workflow is indeed a super easy one. Now let's play with this. For the tutorial, let's use this clip here. Because now we can see my fist a bit closer and this will help a lot with understanding the principles. I open it in After Effects, create a camera. Again, I use the 24mm and apply the Geo Tracker to it. Hmm. But now I don't have a primitive that matches. Hmm. Okay, we need to have a 3D scan of my fist. And by the way, this is what they are also doing with Hugh Jackman's fist to animate all of this in the Wolverine movies. But if you are lazy, you could try searching for free 3D models, for example on Sketchfab. And they indeed have a few. But we are not lazy. We are super lazy, we don't even want to search for them. Because the fitting fists are already attached to our arms. So, I take my smartphone, open up the free Polycam app and start taking pictures of my hand from various angles. And you should take at least 20 different ones. Once done, I select the default settings, enable object masking, because I don't want to create a scan of the surrounding and the whole environment, but only the object that I'm focusing on. So, just start the process. This could take a few minutes and you see a pretty good result. And you can even crop this and apply it and download it. Instead of primitives, I select file and load it. Perfect. Now, let's do the exact same process as before and find our way through the clip. Adjust it whenever it is off and refine at the end. 
Once done, I export a surface point and select the position near my knuckles, where the claws should come out. And all of this is linked to the tracking data. So when I see a bump in the track or any issue, I can go in, set another keyframe, refine it, and it is automatically updated. Okay, speaking of the claws now, why not creating them completely in After Effects? With nothing selected, I create a path in the shape of a claw. And in that way, it creates a shape layer for me automatically. And I can directly turn this into a 3D layer, which now just looks super flat. Hmm. So within the geometry options, we can add an angular bevel style and simply play with the settings until we have something we like. The model is done. Now let's work on the material. For that, let's add an environment light and also directly an HDRI image that we can choose in the light settings so we have something to reflect. But at the moment, nothing is reflecting in those blades. Hmm. And this is because of the default material settings. When we bring down the metal slider and up the specular sliders, we can see that we are on the right track. And depending on the color of your blades, you can fine tweak your look with the diffuse slider. So remember that our null object sits at our knuckles. So let's also set the anchor point of our claws in the right way, meaning to the point where it should align with our hand. And we can do that with the anchor point tool or with the shortcut Y. Now let's connect the claw to our null we created, the one that is also linked to the tracking data via the pick whip tool. And remember, when holding down Alt, it snaps to the same position as the null. Uh, no, it doesn't. Hmm. Well, it does. But we had already positioned our shape layer in the 3D space. So go to its position and set all of it back to zero and we are good to go. Now we can also duplicate the layers, bring one to the left, one to the right, and also rotate them a little bit to your liking. All the rest is now a bonus. I pre comped the claws so that I'm able to add the pixel motion blur effect to this. Also, for the in and out animation, I simply set two keyframes on the claws because I can keyframe the position and it will still hold the overall animation from the null object. And then I just mask this out with a separate layer that I use as an alpha mat for the claws. And we are done. Almost. Well, many of you still want to get the free license, right? So just write to me in the comments which tutorial you want to see next. Another tracking tutorial, a specific effect, a workflow or motion graphics. And I will choose the best comments or maybe the comment that I use for the next tutorial. And there will be free licenses, 50% off and 30% off. So let me know if you really want to buy it, because in that way I can give you the specific giveaway. And I will announce the winners in the next tutorial. So feel free to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss that. And for now, I wish you a lot of fun tracking objects in After Effects.